Well, today you're gonna learn how to code better with these three techniques that you will use. Yes, you're going to use it. It's an order. <laughs> well, let's begin from the beginning. The first principle, or technique as you can, can say, as a preference, it is called the Single Responsibility Principle. This is the first principle from the solid, and it is also called SRP. This principle says that your class or function must have only a reason to change. In simple terms, each class or function should do one thing only and do it well. For example, if I have a function called sum, it will only perform a sum and nothing more than that. Uh, now let me just do an example using a class. For example, imagine I have the following code. In the class user, you want to have the constructor setting, the variables, of email and name. The user repository only saves the user to database. The email service only sends the email to user email provided. Each class has one reason to change. For example, user changes if user data changes, user repository changes if storage changes, email service changes if email logic changes. Now let me show you one other bad example, just for you to memorize and understand better what I'm saying. As you can see, we have multiple methods that can be implemented in their own classes, like send email, it could be sent to a class called email, for example, and user manager does too much stuff, like data persistence, notifications, logging, and a Twitter. Because you have save, send email, look at act activity, uh, this kind of stuff should be in another domain if uh, this term is correct to use. It has multiple reasons to change, violating the SRP, the principle we just told you. So with SRP, we do only we do one class or function with one reason to change. Where is the benefit? It is easier to test, maintenance, debugging, and reusability. That's it. Open close principle, also called as OCP, it is the O in solid. It states software entities, class models, functions, etc. should be open for extension, but close it for modification. If someone says this sentence for me, I wouldn't understand much stuff. Uh, that's it. <laughs> in simple terms, let me just say in other words, right? Uh, you should be able to add new behavior without changing the existing code. And uh, instead of editing the core logic every time a new requirement appears, you extend it usually via inheritance, composition, or static patterns. <coughs> the problem why this uh, this principle exists. Let's consider a complex e-commerce system. You have an order that class that handles various types of orders. Uh, here is the implementation. Now imagine your application grows and you need to introduce a discount system. Without adhering to the OCP, you might be tempted to modify the order class. By adding this discount property directly to the order class, you have added more complexity to the class and made it like a brick. Because to add new stuff, you would have to break it and recreate with a new logic, making it less flowable, if you understand me. So let me give you the solution now. To follow the OCP, you should extend your code rather than modifying it. Look at this snippet. You have a class discounted order, extended order. So you just created a new class called discounted, discounted order that is an error of the other class, order class. And you didn't change anything in the order class and couple the features in your program making it more organized for future changes in it. Because the other class can still be reutilized in other stuff in your program. Uh, in other words, you remade the code untouched, it, reducing the risk of appearing bugs in it, and it is also very scalable and reusable. The third principle for this video is the interface segregation principle. Well, the last technique for this video, this principle represents the I in solid acron. It says that a class should not be forced to implement interface that it's not used. To be clear, clients should not be forced to depend on interface they don't use. <coughs> Here is the problem in illustrated in this snippet. You can see that the method called record auto is fine at the auto player class. On this, it is used. But when you look at the video player class, the method from the interface we just created called record auto is irrelevant to its context. In this scenario, video player class is forced to implement the required audio method even even though it has no meaningful use for it. This can lead to confusion, maintenance issues, and unnecessary dependencies. What is the solution? We need to refactor our interface dividing it in, in two, to be more specific and focusing on their intended use cases. For example, interface auto player, play audio, record audio, and interface video player, play video. Instead of that solution, we just created two interfaces for both classes attending to their need. This ensures that each class is only responsible for the methods relevant to its context.